Good evening everyone and welcome to today's session. December 29th, outside temperature is 7 degrees Celsius. Still you are all hot in your heart to become the winner, to quickly consolidate the preparation and uh, heading towards becoming the winners of the NEET PG 2020. So I hope you are all studying very well. Morning you did uh, a rocking preparation, I hope so. Very good. Santosh is reminding Hyderabad is 17 only, sir. Right. Uh, yes. Though I was in a social function, all my heart is about coming back home and joining the class. So, good to see 45 online students. Now, a lot of students ask me a question. Sir, how do you classify the questions topic-wise and uh, um, how do you manage to uh, create topic-wise content and uh, uh, prioritize the topics? What is the process? I just wanted to share you something today. See, there are 200 questions in foreign medical graduate exam in uh, dermatology dermatology so in this every question we label okay this question is from femfigus and bullus femficoid this question is from femficus bullus femficoid this question is from femficus bullus femficoid like that we we will be labeling what is the question that it belongs to it's a simple excel then this question belong to tinea this question also belong to tinea this question belong to tinea so we will be counting how many questions have been asked so like that all 200 questions asked in the last 15 years of uh, the foreign medical graduate exam in dermatology there are some questions like for dice spots only four times asked and uh, questions on lupus vulgaris only they have been asked four times so that gives us the list femficus bullus femficoid was asked 17 times in the last 15 years of uh, fmg exam tinea dermatophyte infection was asked 15 times histology questions on histology have been asked 13 times questions on psoriasis came nine times like that in the descending order of the priority we organize the topics so whenever a student is going for exam very short time is available always we suggest by a head topic list in the descending order of priority try to read at least the top 15 topics femficus Dermatophyte, histology, psoriasis, erythema multiforme, leprosy, LGV, chancroids, syphilis like STDs, lichen planus, acne, alopecia, pityriasis rosea, pityriasis versicola, scabies. Bus. There are so many things asked only two times, one time, one time. What is the point in reading them if you don't have time? So that is how. Whether it is AIMS Question Bank, All India or PGI or JIPMER or anything, we do classification like this of every subject and then topic wise we deliver the session. So that is how today we are going to review the top 20 topics that you need to be very sure in dermatology. Hardly we take about 10-15 minutes time. 20 topics, 5 to 6 of us, we should say, we are done with dermatology. So that is uh, the whole spirit of our uh, preparation doctor. So let us look into what was asked in dermatology, starting with femfigus bullus femfigoid. Don't think FMG question bank bole to need PG ke liye kya kaam karega re FMG me. Both acha acha questions were there. Same question bank even for the need PG also. So that is the reason 
you have to, it's worth definitely running through these questions. Right? Good to see uh, Visalakshi, Vandan, Priyanga, um, Nagredi, and many more who are all online. In which condition is Nikolsky sign positive? And the Bulla spread the sign is seen. That is what you have to be uh, sure about. Pemphigus vulgaris. So, what is Nikolsky sign? Very simple. There is a blister. Blister means you know, no? Uh, blister. If you apply laterally pressure on that blister, there is a peripheral extension of the blister that is called as Nikolsky sign. It indicates and it differentiates between intradermal and subepidermal lesion is what you need to remember. So there are two types of Nikolsky. Very good. Keep punching some thoughts that come to your mind, some points that come to your mind. That's how we will take this session forward. I am so happy to see 75 online students. Thank you so much at 11 p.m. in the night to join our uh, zombie club to suck the things out of the Khun PNG Need PG Examiner ka. Okay. Now, direct Nikolsky sign. Typically, on a normally appearing skin, at a very distant site, you are applying direct Nikolsky. Even in a normally looking skin also, if you apply pressure, if it is leading to lateral, uh, lateral uh, extension of the blister, that means it is a very severe activity of emphasis. Now, if you do the same closer to a blistered area on the normal skin only, but closer to already an existing blister, that's called marginal Nikolsky sign. So Nikolsky is a moderately sensitive, highly specific for the diagnosis of pemphigus. Marginal Nikolsky is more sensitive and direct Nikolsky is more specific as a clinical sign is what you need to remember. Now doctor, <coughs> one of the favorite questions of the examiner is Shekalakau sign, Nikolsky, Shekalakau, all Russian vodka, Yadrako. False Nikolsky sign, where do we see? Bullus femphigoid, femphigoid gestationalis, dermatitis herpetiformis, epidermolysis bullosa, porphyrias, bullus SLE. It is typically positive in all sub epidermal blistering disorders. That is what you need to emphatically remember. Then what is meant by Bulla spread sign? Bulla spread sign is also called Lutz. Lutz sign. Wow. Whatever. 94 online students. Today we should touch 200. 200. Hum ko bhi kaam nahi. Aap ko bhi kaam nahi. We are completely jobless, obsessed about the need PG 2020. So I decided morning, afternoon, evening, TID, TID, OD, BD, bolte na, thrice daily, TID, shuru karenge, and every day, at least two to three hundred questions ka discussion karenge up to uh, the need PG, so that we are all sailing the same boat and doing the revision. So doctor, what is Bulla spread sign? The margin of an intact Bulla is marked with a pen. And unidirectionally you will be applying the pressure with a finger to the Bulla. It will cause the peripheral extension of the Bulla beyond the marked margin. That is called Bulla spread. So typically 
if it is pemphigus vulgaris, the bulla has extended and it has a irregular angulated border. Irregular angulated border. Whereas if it is a subepidermal bullous disorder, it has a regular rounded border. So that is how you can differentiate pemphigus vulgaris from the subepidermal bullous disorders. The list which I have shown you by using the bulla spread sign is what you need to remember. So how will you do the bulla spread sign? You are applying a vertical pressure on the bulla. And uh, it is also called Asbo Hansen sign. Is this uh, other name given for uh, the bulla spread sign? Asbo Hansen sign. Now, Pemphigus foliaceus. Punch your answer, doctor. It is antibody against what? Keep punching the answers so that you are actively doing the revision along with me. Yeah? Now, <clears throat> Mohan Babu says Desmoglin 1. Very good. <clears throat> uh, let us see. So, Doc, it is Desmoglin 1. Absolutely. This was a question of FMG 2017. <clears throat> so, Femphigus foliaceus ke baare mein panch pantiyo mein jawaab de do. Recurrent crops of flaccid bulle that are easy to rupture leaving shallow erosions and erythematous plaques. And what is the target antigen in Pemphigus foliaceus Desmoglin 1? And the antibody belong to immunoglobulin G4 subclass. And there are two types of presentation. A lupus like is called Pemphigus erythromatosus. Endemic variant, which is called Fogo selvajami. Right? Fogo selvajami. It is also called wild fire is the other name given for an endemic variant. Typically South American names will be like uh, El Salvador, Spanish names, Fogo Salvajam. And those who live near the river, it is also thought that it is because of the black fly, similar, the same one which is associated with uh, Onkocerca. <coughs> So, Femphigus foliaceus, Femphigus vegetans, drug induced Femphigus vulgaris. There are various forms of Femphigus foliaceus. Femphigus foliaceus appear in the seboric area presenting with scaly crusted erythematous lesions. Femphigus vegetans is in the intertriginous areas periorally. Then what are the drugs that lead to drug induced pemphigus vulgaris doctor captopril penicillamine these are the two drugs that should not be forgotten so if you look at the pemphigus doctor there are three types of pemphigus vulgar foliaceous and paraneoplastic pemphigus once more two three points about each of them what is pemphigus <coughs> Blistering autoimmune disease that affects the skin and also mucous membrane. Even mucous membrane is involved. That is a differentiator from bullous femphigoid. Femphigus vulgaris ko differential diagnosis kya hota doctor? Bullous femphigoid. These are the typical blisters, flaccid blisters that you see in case of uh, femphigus. It is autoimmune, involves immunoglobulin G. Genetic factors have a role. Penicillin, Captopril, Myasthenia gravis, they are all associated. And the Femphigus antibody is against the Desmoglin, which is a cell surface antigen. And the blister forms because of that antigen antibody reaction. If you take Femphigus vulgaris, 
antibodies against what? Desmoglin 3. And it is typically the protein which is there in the epidermal layer of the skin. Femphigus foliaceus, it is there in the desmoglin 1. Is what you need to remember. And the least common is paraneoplastic femphigus, is what you should remember. Then how do you describe these femphigus lesions, doctor? Irregular, painful, bleed easily, heal slowly, the skin bullet enlarge, rupture and leave large painful eroded areas which are oozing. You have Nikolsky positive and how do you manage? You have to prevent the loss of serum, secondary infection, promote re-epithelialization. Is there any role for steroids? Yes, sir. Corticosteroids are given in order to manage. Because this is autoimmune, you can give immunosuppressive like azathioprine. Since it involves antibodies, you can purge out those antibodies by doing plasma emphasis. That is the plasma exchange is what you have to ultimately remember. Now, <clears throat> femphigus vulgaris can be seen due to antibodies against desmosomal cadherin cell binding protein. What is that? It is desmoglin 3, desmoglin 1 against both of them. Row of tombstones. Smashan me gayeto. Tombstones were there, doctor. Right? So, tombstone, row of tombstone, typically seen in femphigus vulgaris. Can you see, doctor, the tombstones, tombstone, right? To tombstone appearance. So, there is an acantholysis, that is separation of the epidermal cells from one another. Typically, there is a separation of epidermis, and that leaves the basal layer with the cells which are separated from one another because of the acanthalysis. And this is called the tombstone appearance, is what you have to remember. So, a supra basal blister with acanthalysis, that is the Q word you should remember. Supra basal blister above the basal layer, acanthalysis. And the basal state cells. These basal cells are there, no doctor. They remain attached to the basement membrane. They are not separated. And they lose contact with their neighbors. One cell, other cell lost the contact. And because of that, you get a row of stone, tom stones appearance, is what you need to remember. And the upper epidermis remains intact. That is the point you need to appreciate. So, here you can see these are the typical strand of the row of the tombstones. Typically, they are separated from one another. That's what you are able to ap appreciate. Now, if you do immunofluorescence, doctor, one of the favorite question. Fish net. Fish net. Fish net appearance on uh, direct immunofluorescence classical feature of Pemphigus vulgaris. This is how a fish net Kalke neat PG exam, FMG exam may image based question yehi deta hai examiner. Immunofluorescence say deke bolega beta fish net dikre kya? Dikhe to ye kya hai? Bullless Pemphigoid hai? Ya Pemphigus vulgaris hai? Bolke puchega. Ab kya jawab dega? Femphigus vulgaris because at 11 p.m. we were in the Dr. Murli's class. Bolke bolna unko. <coughs> this is a immunofluorescence pattern which is being shown to you. This immunofluorescence pattern belongs to which condition? Bullous femphigoid. Typically, we do a split skin immunofluorescence. The technique is called. By immersing in saline, you will achieve the split. Split. A normal skin is being split to create an artificial blister cavity. 
and the serum is applied to the split skin and the antibodies are used to localize the roof of the blister the roof of the blister so now let us quickly talk pemphigus diseases and bullous pemphigoid category of diseases that's how you broadly divide pemphigus diseases include pemphigus vulgaris pemphigus foliaceus iga pemphigus paraneoplastic pemphigus but now desmoglein 3 and 1 pemphigus vulgaris erosion in the mucous membrane flaccid blisters not bullous not a tense then pemphigus foliaceus desmoglein 1 flaccid blisters scaling erosions and blocks iga pemphigus typically desmoglein 1 3 and uh, dsc 1 2 3 and pustules in intertrigenous areas it is iga pemphigus paraneoplastic desmoglein 3 envoplakin antibodies and uh, classically it is the which kind of malignancies lead to the development of uh, paraneoplastic uh, pemphigus doctor hematological malignancies thymoma castleman's disease these are the things that you need to basically remember Raghu is complimenting hi sir just now joining them really great um, from you to teach us no matter what time it is Hamara supra chiasmatic nucleus ko kali h is the kai dire january 5th i want all you guys sending me good news that you got into your dream branch right humko bhi kaam nahi aapko bhi kaam nahi hum milke baith ke padhai karenge that is the only this is the only thing that i know very well in addition to clinical practice only two things and nothing gives more happiness than spending uh, than spending today one of my patients uh, with SLE with uh, grade 4 uh, uh, lupus nephritis last 4 years I have been seeing her she is so determined uh, female and uh, very young girl and uh, she got uh, she got afflicted with SLE when she was in her uh, B.Tech second year. Now she cleared her GRE and then uh, she is leaving to do her MS MS program in uh, uh, Purdue University. So she gave a her father gave a call and said, "Doctor, my daughter is leaving tonight. She love to uh, meet you." Today being Sunday, uh, I request you to uh, be with us while we are farewelling our daughter. Uh, she feels she has a rebirth spending time with you in her tough time. Once she had alveolar pneumonitis, significant pulmonary edema with which she got admitted in a stormy emergency night. I still remembering uh, that evening, uh, that was about four years back. So she is going and uh, she is a doll and uh, now very much confident. Uh, so that's the reason what I am saying to you is doctor, you are all born to do some great things. That is the whole purpose. You have become a medical student, a doctor. So this NEET, PG, FMG or any exam is only one next step. So that's what we will uh, cruise together to achieve that. Now femphigoid diseases is bullous femphigoid. It is against the basement membrane protein 230, 180 and tense blisters, erosions, erythema, articarial blocks. That's what you need to remember. Then you also have mucous membrane femphigoid, femphigoid gestationalis. Typically it presents in the periumbilical area, classically, vesicles, articarial blocks. Right? So that's what you need to remember. Now, doctor, there is one more uh, femphigoid lesion that is 
epidermolysis bullosa it is type a anti collagen antibodies against type 8 collagen is what you need to remember then dermatitis herpetiformis it is epidermal transglutaminase tissue type transglutaminase against which the antibodies are developed there are severe itching lesions on the extensor surface is what you need to remember so in the exam you will get such a lesion typically mucosal involvement means femphigus vulgaris tombstone appearance acantholysis so this is how classically femphigus vulgaris looks like femphigus foliaceus on the upper back there are erosions and crusts erosions and crusts and uh, subcorneal split formation and acantholysis that is a classical feature then bullous femphigoid tense blisters how are they? tense blisters <coughs> and uh, in the histopathology there will be numerous isnophils within and below the blister cavity which is the classical feature which you need to understand and if you happen to do immunofluorescence doctor typically this is the linear fluorescence pattern which you are able to see of the basement membrane in the perilesional area in a case of bullous femphigoid bullous femphigoid that is what you should remember now doctor <coughs> what is this pattern typically one cell loses touch with another that's called acantholysis it is the intercellular the small green protein on which the antibodies are directed there is a reason intercellular fluorescence is what you typically see then it is pemphigus vulgaris and this is called fishnet pattern linear fluorescence you can see linear fluorescence because it is against that basement membrane this is bullous pemphigoid this is another example typically on the roof of that blister the patient is having a linear fluorescence of the basement the entire basement membrane that is bullous pemphigoid this is another example it is also a femphigoid lesion goid boleto not intercellular it is not against desmoglin it is against the basement membrane entire basement membrane is involved this is epidermolysis bullosa is what you need to ultimately remember now tell me doctor acantholysis punch your answer quickly question number six acantholysis very good Sandarya, indrani namrata <coughs> everybody is saying separation of keratinocytes acantholysis is just below the stratum corneum and in the granular layer and uh, typically it is a finding in all those subcorneal pustules with the cantholysis in the blister cavity so if you look at the femphigus vulgaris there are immunoglobulin g autoantibodies they lead to separation of the cells destruction of the desmosomes and there is a cellular degeneration and formation of suprabacillar bulla that is what you need to remember leaving a tombstones with an um, upper part intact right because it is a supra bacillar bulla so jank smear is the one which will help you doctor jank cell is a acantholytic cell it is a large rounded keratinocyte it has a large nuclear cytoplasmic ratio rim of isnophilic cytoplasm and the staining it is more deeper and it is more deeper more deeper and basophilic in the periphery 
that's called morning edged cells what are they called morning edged cells in the case of the femphigus vulgaris is what you should remember so one mcq is going to come in this doctor very good maran says malphigian layer in uh, spinosum and basal is the one which is involved in heli heli you mean heli heli good now doctor femphigus me jank smear me kya dikhayega acanthalytic cells bullous femphigoid me what do you see predominantly eosinophils chronic bullous disorders in childhood predominantly neutrophils varicella zoster herpes simplex multi nucleated jank cells toxic epidermal necrolysis me if you do jank smear you see necrotic cells that is what you need to basically remember wow games hacker i am in class 12 and doing prep for neat ug please give me blessing sir why not doctor you have blessing of 125 seniors uh, who are sitting here and uh, remember aj games hacker that uh, the journey you feel that getting seat in medical school is over no you are seeing no so many are having the next journey to get into md right so journey is continuous very good keep punching the answers down there acanthalytic cells in femphigus vulgaris femphigus vulgaris femphigus vulgaris is caused by autoimmunity femphigus bullae where are they located doctor intra epidermal because it is the desmoglein desmoglein again so which antibodies are there sub epidermal is seen in the case of the femphigoid not femphigus femphigus vulgaris is intra epidermal and femphigoid is sub epidermal is what you need to remember intra epidermal bullae where do you see once more एक बार यू क्रॉस दट फाइव टू टेन पॉइंट इन एवरी टॉपिक यू क्रॉस इट दफ पार्ट ऑफ एवरी टॉपिक बट दैट इज इंपॉर्टेंट दट टेन पॉइंट ऑन ईच टॉपिक जो होता है ना डॉक्टर उसको पकड़ के यू शुड गेट द ग्रिप ग्रैश एंड द ग्रिट ऑफ दो टेन पॉइंट इन एवरी टॉपिक all 953 topics you should get that hold doctor nobody is going to stop you from becoming the topper femphigus vulgaris is intra epidermal bulla fatafat bolo doctor favorite question of the examiner one mcq guaranteed from this list paper out whether you are going for neat pg or fmge pgi or aims surely mucosal involvement kaha rehta femphigus vulgaris 100% mucosal involvement foliaceous none so it is femphigus it doesn't have then paraneoplastic femphigus severe mucositis bullous femphigoid only 10 to 40% that to transient mild almost you can say uh, none almost you can say none because it is transient why the femphigoid gestationalis dermatitis herpetiformis you don't find mucosal involvement linear iga disease epidermolysis bullosa it is found in 80% to 50% of cases now where is the distribution femphigus vulgaris skull face flexure strength femphigus foliaceous seborrheic distribution then intracellular iga dermatosis axillary groin scalp face bullous femphigoid trunk limb flexures that is what you need to appreciate similarly jank smear me if it is femphigus vulgaris favorite question morning edged cells subtly rosette cells 
and streptocytes. They are the things that you see in Femphigus vulgaris. Bullus Femphigoid, Stephen Johnson, Lichen Planus. Typically, there is no acantholysis. In fact, presence of acantholysis against the diagnosis of this uh, subepidermal conditions. Herpes simplex varicella, herpes joster may you find on jank. Ballooning degeneration, acantholytic cells and multinucleated cells. So that is what you need to appreciate. Abhi aagaya, favorite topic of exam. <coughs> Apologize, doctor. I hope my voice is too husky. Is it clear? Is it uh, audible and clear for you? It's a bit husky. <coughs> Differences between femphigus, femphigoid, femphigus, femphigoid. Is table ko puja karo kyunki definitely a question aane wala hai. 100% I am giving you assurance. This is one table from which one question definitely comes. Femphigus usually affects middle age. Barabar? Elderly person is femphigoid. How will you remember? Some way you have to remember. Femphigus is acute, non itchy. Femphigoid is chronic and itchy. Femphigus is seen on the trunk, flexure, scalp, scalp and trunk also. But femphigoid usually flexural, flexural, right? Mouth blisters are common with mucosal involvement in femphigus. Mouth blisters are rare in femphigoid, right, doc? Uh, Manan says, herpes simplex joster ke beech mein kya farak hai? Joster is dermatomal in distribution. Herpes simplex, they are vesicles. And they can be perivoral or they will be genital. Now, the blister is superficial, flaccid if it is femphigus. But blister is tense and bloody if it is femphigoid. Circulating antibody is immunoglobulin G to intracellular radiation protein if it is femphigus. But it is immunoglobulin against the basement membrane if it is femphigoid. Serum antibody titer correlates with the disease activity. More the titer, more the uh, severity of femphigus. But serum antibody titer does not correlate with the clinical disease activity in femphigoid. Acantholysis is a feature of femphigus. Nikolsky sign is positive in femphigus. But not in femphigoid is what you need to remember. Varemba, hum baut kush hai, 132 online students. Please mention in your uh, Telegram, Facebook, WhatsApp, Jahabi Ho, to ask the students to join Dr. This midnight masala in dermatology. Yeah? Now, true about femphigus bullying. Acantholysis usually involves mucosa, flaccid bullying, Nikolsky positive. Intercellular antibodies typically are seen in femphigus. Nikolsky is seen in case of the femphigus vulgaris, even in the case of herpes simplex and herpes joster. Nikolsky is absent in, it is absent in bullous femphigoid. Linear deposition, linear deposition of IgG and C3 in the lamina lucida. Where do we see duck? We see it in case of bullous femphigoid. Tomb stone appearance. Where do you see duck? We see it in case of femphigus vulgaris. Khatam. Dekha? 17 questions. Kelte, 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 khatam kiya. FMG ka past to 15 years question papers. So that is what I am trying to tell you. There will be maximum 15-20 points on each topic. 
there are 953 topics doctor let me once more uh, reinforce to tell your juniors also 953 topics how do we get these topics how did we conclude that these are the 953 topics every subject may five question marks aims all india right all india pgi jipman fmge dnb last 15 years kalya so totally 30000 mcqs we have taken from the last 15 years every question we label this belongs to this topic this topic this topic this topic and then we brought all questions belonging to the same topic to one place and we found there are certain topics most frequently asked and uh, there are some topics only asked one time two times or three times like that we came up with around 40 to 50 topics in descending order of the priority based on this five six major question banks in the past 15 years that's how we arrived at this 953 topics invariably examiner is going to ask 300 mcqs whether need pg ho unka bap ho fmg ho or aims ho pgi ho he 953 topics se niklega so we have developed about thousand hours of video lecture duration around 3000 lectures on this 953 topics topic wise in every subject and made it all the video discussion these powerpoints uh, everything is made available in the online mbbs.com video library additionally to motivate you to study every day we will do two hours of live online interactive session right so you meet all the classmates across the country and have an opportunity to spice up yourself for preparation across the year every sunday we conduct a grand test and discussion every saturday subject test and discussion across the 52 weeks so tell your juniors there is no other place that they need they, they that they need to look for online mbbs.com video library 9000868356 call today only and take the subscription to the online mbbs.com video library for throwaway price whatever the price that you can afford no worries right we are not very price specific or anything our job is how many people we are able to ultimately deliver and serve that's what uh, we are looking for so please take this opportunity and tell your juniors now doctor a patient presents with a lesion in the occipitotemporal region as what you can see here what is the possible diagnosis tenia second highest preferred topic in fmg exam in dermatology is dermatophyte even in need pg also priority will be more or less like this only so now doctor let us quickly review about tenia superficial fungal infection dermatophyte hota hai tenia sabko malum hai right then it has a propensity to attack the hair shafts follicles isi ko kehte hain ringworm of the scalp tenia tonsurans is the other name now tenia capitis is caused by trichophyton and microsporum group of fungi basically the superficial mycosis are divided into the microsporum trichophyton epidermophyton three types so trichophyton microsporum they are the ones which lead to the development of the tenia capitis it almost always occurs in small children tenia capitis incidence is increasing and now tenia capitis is, is classified according to how the fungus is invading the shaft of the hair accordingly it is called ectotrix infection typically caused by microsporum canis nanum verrucosum 
So the fungal branches, hyphae and spores, they cover the outside of the scab, of the hair. That is typically called ectopteryx infection. Then endotrix infection, where do, where do you see? Typically, it will be the hair shaft is filled with the hyphae and anthracoridia. Trichophyton, tonsurans, violaceum, they all are endotrix. Then you have favus. Favus is caused by trichophyton shonlia. It leads to a honeycomb destruction of the hair shaft. So it is more common in the boys. Trichophyton tonsurans uh, can occur in adults. And tinea capitis, how does it clinically present? It can present like a dry scaling. Dandruff, dandruff, bolthera, that is tinea capitis. Black dots, that hair will be broken down and it will leave one small black dot. The area from where the hair is arising, black dot. Then there are smooth areas of hair loss, as what you can see here. Smooth areas of hair loss. Okay, doc. Then carry on. Carry on means an inflamed mass like an abscess in the scalp. That is carry on. Then favus. Favus is those yellow crusts of the matted hair, is called favus. These are the various types of presentation. Then the tinea cactus can occur in three forms mainly gray patch, black dot, famous. Gray patch, tinea cactus. How do you like to describe it? Erythematous, scaling, well demarcated patch, and uh, it is round, grayish, scaly blocks which are progressively expanding. Then black dot. Tinea capitis. Aapko yaha dikh rahe na doctor? Dot 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 black dots dikh rahe na? Right? This is called black dot tinea capitis. Then famous. Typically there is a periphoricular erythema. It will progress into a cup shaped yellow crust. Which is called scutula. Scutula. Scutula is also composed of fungi, neutrophils. It has an unpleasant smell. They are all two things. And most often favors is caused by trichophyton shonlii, which is a endotrix. Endotrix infection is what you need to remember. Whatever 155 online students from both Krishna. Midnight at 12 o'clock. We are all the zombies waiting to drink the blood of the NTPG examiner. Hey na, doctor, are you all game with me? Anxiety lag rai, tension lag rai. Last moment kya karna? There is no strategy in last moment. There is no strategy in last moment. The only strategy in last moment is read whatever is available which is called the focused learning material and go for the exam. See confidence, see common sense, and see conceptual clarity. These are the three C's that is going to lead you, doctor. Now, Wood's light is what we use for ectotrix. Whereas endotrix, they do not fluoresce with the Wood's light. You can use KOH to identify the spores of the hair shaft, and you can culture on Severot's medium. And uh, whenever there is scaling, balding patches, you suspect tinea capitis. Wood light fluorescence is helpful, but it is not diagnostic. You have to do microscopy, culture of the skin scraping in order to make the diagnosis. So what are the complications of the tinea doctor? What are the complications? Severe hair loss, scarring alopecia, this is the favorite MCQ in exam. Causes of the scarring, causes of the non-scarring alopecia. 100% you should be sure when you go to the exam tomorrow, doctor. So scarring alopecia with bald areas. That is what you see as a complication. And of course, psychological impact of bullying. Hey, dendrophalary, durraho, durraho. 
right so how do you treat doctor you can use shampoo containing selenium sulfide povidone iodine two percent ketoconazole zinc pyrethrone is what you need to remember you can also give systemically grisofulvin terbinafin oral itraconazole fluconazole these are all the options which are available for you now doctor once more 2017 fmg ka question hai patient presented with a patchy rash which is involving the trunk and the back as shown in the figure this is not only affecting trunk but also back what is this lesion is the examiner's question excellent priyanga and uh, priyanga jagadishwari uh, bubesh devarma rocking with the correct answers tinea corporis so doctor this is the tinea corporis on the hand on the thigh is what you are able to see so tinea corporis ko bolte hai ring one multiple angular scaly lesions but what is classical central clearing there will be central clearing which is classical and slightly elevated reddened edge with a sharp margination that is what you will be able to see and the border of the lesion will contain pustules follicular lesions papules of course itching itch, itching is invariable in dermatophyte infections so doctor these are one or more circular sharply demarcated slightly erythematous lesions which are dry scaly hypopigmented with a central clearing and a peripheral erythematous inflamed uh, margin that is what you are able to see which is tinea corporis is what you need to remember so what is the cause for the tinea corporis doctor anthrophilic and zoophilic tinea rubrum tinea rubrum rubrum rubbo rubrum so tinea rubrum is the most common cause doctor tinea rubrum is the most common cause one of the favorite single liner mcq in the tomorrow's exam now doctor what are dermatophytes i can't believe 162 online excellent doctor thank you for coming and tell your friends also today kya hai abhi already we entered 30th 30th 31st first second third fourth when is the exam fifth or sixth when is the exam so we still have six days doctor six days right i promise I, I said there is no other thing that I am going to do next six days. I am once more becoming a need PG aspirant along with you. Every day padai karenge. Do gante hum prepare honge. Ek gante aapko padai denge. Phir do gante prepare honge. Aur ek gante padai denge. Pura din aapke saath bitayenge doctor. So that is my promise to all of you. Right? Ha. So fifth. Fifth hai na Sindhja. Right. So please don't forget to be part of our whatsapp study group the moment i start a class you get a notification that the class is going to start and also subscribe to this channel and click on the bell sign so that you get a notification from youtube right ha huh, that is the plan doctor dermatophytes are trichophyton rubrum so doctor if you look at taxonomic classification of the fungi dermatophytes they belong to deuteromycota fungi imperfecti there are three types of genera microsporum trichophyton epidermophyton now microsporum what is the thing you remember spindle shape they infect skin hair skin chamada or hair Mycosporum canis nanum, that is what you need to remember. Then trichophyton, trichophyton are pencil, pencil shaped. Okay, 
so they infect all the three try go to three na skin nail hair all the three get affected trichophyton rubrum tonsurans mentagrophytes they are all trichophyton so trichophyton capitis infection of scalp and hair barbe means beard area corporis means trunk cruris ko bolte hai jock itch very good to see uh, uh, good uh, now manum infection of the hand anguinum infection of nail pedis is called athlete's foot infection of the foot is what you should remember once more but now trichophyton skin hair nails microsporum skin and hair and epidermophyton skin and nails is what you need to remember so one thing you need to know microsporon does not involve nails so it can't cause anguinum epidermophyton does not involve the hair only skin and nails that's the reason it cannot lead to tinea capitis it cannot lead to tinea capitis that is what you need to remember now doctor which structure is affected by dermatophytes of course skin hair nail all of them trichophyton infects skin hair nail is what you need to remember then which infects the skin and hair but not the nails varicosum and microsporum trichophyton and microsporum both of them they infect skin and hair a case of 12 years old boy presents with a boggy 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 if you the moment you see boggy you should jump and think of only one condition what is the condition that you will think doctor typically it is the famous a boggy swelling easily pluckable hair 12 year old boy children may capitis more common just before we discuss now so tinea capitis is what you need to remember now doctor a woman presented with these lesions right a woman presented with this classical lesion so what is the treatment of choice for this lesion doctor topical imidazole is considered to be the treatment of this condition now doc if you look at the imidazole imidazole ko kya bolte clotrimazole is an example of it the bioavailability is low when you take it orally hence it is used topically the activity in the vagina remains for 3 days it lead to erythema pruritus urticaria mild vaginal burning sensation when used so where do we use it dermatophytes cutaneous candidiasis and vulvo vaginal candidiasis also you use the topical imidazole is what you need to remember so ye jo ringworm ka infection hai yaha topical imidazole is something that you can be able to use now doctor what is substance which is common in skin me hair me nail me what is common neat pg me fmg me aims me what is common 953 topics given by dr murli bharadwaj if you did not receive that please call or whatsapp our helpline immediately 9000868 Three five six now only now only right and uh, ask for the PDF containing nine fifty three topics which is very important so in all the three you have keratin is what you should remember tinea corporis gladiatorum gladiator movie देखा क्या gladiator क्या होता है कुश्ती कुश्ती दंगल दंगल है ना तो tinea corporis Dangalatorum, gladiatorum. What does it involve? It involves the trunk. Kusti karte na usko by contact infection ho jata. So tinea corporis gladiatorum is the tinea of the body, ringworm, circular pruritic patches with raised borders. Common in the people who do wrestling is what you need to remember. 
Tinea corporis gladiatorum is caused by what? That is a tomorrow's examiner's question. Trichophyton, trichophyton tonsillates. It is not from the fomites. Match, oh, sabse nahi aata. It is the direct contact while you are doing wrestling with infected individual. Sweden may, they have discovered uh, outbreaks of this among the wrestlers. The fungus which is causing the hair, skin, the nail, all the three, what is it called? Trichophyton rubrum is what you should remember. You have been given an image. What is this image showing you? Come on, question number 29. <laughs> FMG ka question hai image based wala. Bohut easy hota hai doctor exam. You will imagine a lot but it is not that lot difficult. Only keep cool that uh, there is nothing a rocket science tested there. It is a routine thing batch after batch we are seeing so many students. Last 22 years, 22 to 25 years I have mentored almost more than 2 lakh students for the need to PG, All India PG, JIPMER, State PG and all the exams. Every student has a similar insecurity, similar inadequacies, similar incomplete, incompleted topics. Things are similar doctor. Years change, batches change. Examiner doesn't change. Uh, situations do not change. The solutions to conquer that also doesn't change. That's what I want to tell you, right? So Ashwin Maran uh, and uh, Muhammad, everyone is saying B, carry on. Absolutely, doctor. Carry on is zoonotic, painful, pruritic, pustula, folliculitis with regional lymphadenopathy. It is a boggy swelling. Studied with the broken hairs, purulent sticky material that makes it carry on. Hairs are easily removable when pulled, pluckable. And if you don't treat permanent scarring, alopecia is the consequence of the carry on is what you need to remember. So this is a famous in an infant, even in infant it can happen, famous, famous lesion. The given KOH may aapko kya dikh raha hai Arjun o teer chalao sahi answer ki taraf teer chalao mere pyare Arjun fata fat shoot karo aapka answer Chalapati bahut din ho gaya Chalapati aapse milke Chalapati Indrani Tara Mohammed Jai Pranati everyone is betting on A A Yay! Are you seeing that Italian spaghetti meatball in this? Come on, doctor. You are universally clean bold. Naya Mani. All our friends are coming at 12 o'clock. I'm so happy. I think midnight uh, masala is much more powerful for the next six days, I think. We'll study both daytime. We study in the afternoon together. We study in the evening. We study in the night. We will fight on the ground, we will fight on the sea, we will fight in the air to win and bomb the German army. So that is how like in World War II, you should be ready, fully energetic uh, when you are with Dr. Murli Bhardwaj. Excellent doctor. Budding is pseudo hyphae. That is what you are seeing in this doctor. Right? Now, pseudo hyphae and budding is. Here you are able to see, here also you are able to see the budding is. So, in the exam, the image will in the image based MCQ. You have to be 100% sure to answer this doctor. So, pseudo hyphae, this is how they look like. This is a chlamydospore, this is a blastospore, these are yeast like cells. That is what you are able to see here. So typically if you use KOH wet mount, why do you use KOH? Potassium hydroxide dissolve the protein debris. You will be adding glycerol and the slices, 
slide is placed under microscope and you find brown walled hyphae and ease. So that is a bed preparation with KOH. So the ease hyphae pseudo hyphae, they are all easily recognized on the KOH preparation against the background. Abhi agya Italian spaghetti meat ball appearance. Google images me jara dekho spaghetti meat ball kaisa dikhta hai when you order Italian food. Right? That noodles and spaghetti meat ball. So KOH skin scraping me. There will be clusters of budding yeast like cells and short angular hyphal forms, which is typically seen in pteriasis, what see color. What is it caused by? Melasazia furfur. Melasazia furfur. Mun mun se. Malmena. Mun mun se. Keje se. Is kanambi. Melasezia for fun, right? Pteriasis batsikala. So, this is the typical appearance which is called spaghetti meat ball. Spaghetti meat ball appearance on your plate in an Italian restaurant, right, doc? Now, tinea batsikala typically is caused by Melasezia for fun. It is a lipophilic yeast, is what you should remember. Now, doctor, a funda malum hona hai aapko when we talk about uh, dermatology ka fungal infections. You have molds, yeast, and dimorphics. Molds, molds can form a septate hyphae or septate hyphae. Barabar? Septate, a septate hyphae causing mold kya hota hai rhizopus muca septate hyphae causing uh, molds may you have dimorphics opportunistic molds and dermatophytes that is the broad classification what are dimorphics histoplasma blastomyces pencilium coccidoides then what are opportunistic septate hyphae containing molds Aspergillus fusarium. What are septate hyphae containing molds which are dermatophytes? Trichophyton and microsporum. Then what are yeast? Yeast with the candida, trichosporon, cryptococcus. This is the broad classification. Jarra isko samajna chahi. So, mere pyare Bharatvasiyo. Jo need PG ke jang mein ja rahe ho. Right? Very good. Good to see 187 online students. 13 more friends ko hijack karke lao. Taki hum 200 cross karenge. Just punch it in all your social groups. Now, doctor, this is called septate hyphae. Septate hyphae. Now, doctor, 20 year old patient. Presents with an extremely itchy vision as what you are seeing. Is my kya dikh raha hai Ring, 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 ring. Sir, what is your diagnosis? It is called tinea imbricata. Is what you need to remember. Kal ke need PG exam me examiner ditto ditto yehi deta paper out. Aapko yaad aega, one week back, uh, last Sunday only, we had on that YouTube, uh, that unemployed, uh, jobless uh, Murli Bhargwaj general medicine hai na, uske class mein suna na, bolke aapko yaad aega, I'm telling you. So, doctor, this is how typically ring, 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 kind of a lesion, which is called tinea imbricata. This is another example. Classical pattern of a lesion in tinea imbricata. Tinea imbricata. Achha bhaiya, iske baare mein batao. Tinea imbricata. There will be concentrically arranged rings with undulating lines of scales. Undulating lines of scales is what you need to remember. It is tinea concentricum which lead to tinea imbricata. 
treatment of choice is greasophil bin same like tinea carparis you can also give terbinafin fluconazole itraconazole blah 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 now doctor tinea imbricata etiology concentricum so this is another way this is another way by which examiner can show you a lesion and ask you to identify tinea imbricata then what is tinea nigra these are non inflammatory non scaling lesions which are called tinea nigra exophiala vernicii is responsible so whenever excessive sweating is there kuch logon ko bahut tension hota i love you bolna bole to tension lagta kisi ko dump karna to tension lagta dump kiya gaya to bhi tension lagta are baap kya zindagi hai bhai excessive sweating mein palms mein you get tinea nigra so it is a chronic superficial fungal infection of the palms and soles with brown or black macules and typically on the palm it looks like a stained appearance stained appearance is the classical feature abba a big salute to the great warriors going for the neat pg doctor 203 online students kush hua murli bharadwaj thank you all for coming uh, attending this session doctor next 6 days i will eat i will let us all take a promise we will eat we will drink we will breathe only neat pg high yield questions high yield topics high yield them secure short, short topics that is going to be the deal right doctor and you have to give me a promise that you will bring another 500 students to join our one week maniac concentration camp of uh, dr murli bharadwaj to win the neat pg exam very good doctor lot of battles in life doctor yahan rehta this is the place all battles of life are here mind is the biggest organ that enjoys and loses enjoys a success and loses the game everything is mine so that is the reason first thing when you are going for exam don't defeat this mind usko nahi aisa nahi bolna tum padhta nahi to lazy ho usko dekho wo better hai don't uh, don't insult the mind tell your mind you have 1 billion gray cells my dear mind it is the mind that i got from my daddy my grandpa my great grandpa my forefathers of the past civilization right so tell them why will i forget they did not forget i will not forget that's how unless you suffer from vitamin b12 deficiency and suffering from sub acute combined degeneration leading to dementia right that is not the situation right now doctor right now with this condition which is being shown to you another favorite image based mcq in the foreign medical graduate exam isko kya bolte hain doctor it is typically dobi itch jock itch common in the tropical area is what you need to remember right so this is the typical central clearing peripheral erythematous match that is how you identify so tinea cruris ko kehte hain jocsic asymmetric lesions in the inner thighs if it is mild what will you use topical azoles severe you use fluconazole if it is inflammatory you will be adding the other antifungals so that is how you basically uh, manage right doctor another one more topic is there before we call good night uh, just be online so our team also is working like a 24x7 printing press and uh, they have prepared the ppt and sent to me one minute let me load the ppt <coughs>
Yes, doctor. Welcome back. Can you uh, please punch whether uh, the voice is loud and clear for everybody? Good. Santosh, Ankit, Neha, Maren, Roshan and everybody. Now, continuing our discussion into the next favorite topic of the examiner. Histology. What is the average weight of skin? Doctor, for this question, if you are not prepared, what you have to do in the exam hall? Invisilator ka chamde ko nikal ke immediately weight test karte kya? So, fatafat bola doctor, for this single liner, numeric uh, value, punch your answer. Very good. I am listening 15 cages versus 5 cages. So, doctor, 5 cages. What is the deepest layer? Deepest layer of uh, epidermis. Come on, who is going to give me the correct answer for this uh, simplest, easiest, but nagging MCQ? Deepest layer of epidermis. Come on, doctor. Radhika is proposing corneum. No, no, no. I think not for this question. Uh, please mention the question number. Shweta thinks granulosum. Okay, and uh, Nayomani is thinking A. Okay, if you type multiple times, type kare to, this YouTube is blocking the answer, doctor. One, 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 one. Huh? Multiple times when you type, no, it is blocking. So, doctor, germinate. Now comes a very interesting question, fundamental question in uh, dermatology. What are the layers of epidermis? You have to be very sure. Hum paida hote hai, baad mein school ko jate hai, fir college ko jate hai, birth, school, college. So, birth, school, college. Birth is, what doctor? Stratum basale. What is birth? Stratum basale. School is stratum spinosum is the next layer. Then comes college. C is corneum, L is lucidum, G is granulosum. So granulosum, lucidum, corneum. So uppermost is corneum, then lucidum, then granulosum, then spinosum, then basale. But school, college. That is what you need to remember for the tomorrow's exam. Examiner yehi path guma guma ke puchega. Synthesis of the keratin mainly takes place in which layer? Come on, who is going to give me extempore answer for this question, doctor? Synthesis of keratin. Question number 35, punch your answers. Now 200 students online means there is a lot of fight. Uma Kant is proposing spinosum. Rehana is proposing basil. Abhishek Varma is proposing corneum. Very good. It is spinosum, doctor. Spinosum. Stratum spinosum. Irregular shape sets. There are desposomes which are uh, joining. This is the stratum spinosum. Joining adjacent cells. And uh, spiny appearance is typically because of these uh, uh, irregularly shaped cells. They lead to heavy production of keratin. So keratin ko banane wala layer kya hota hai? Spinosum produce the keratin. Outland bodies. This is the favorite FMG question many times asked in the MCI screening test. Fada Fad Bola Doctor. What a land body. Who is going to give me the correct answer? Count Banega, Neat PG Pati. Nayo money doesn't stop in firing multiple answers. B, 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 B. Okay, okay. So most of the people are saying granulosum. Whatever. Excellent Doctor. So you should remember. Odland bodies are called keratinosomes. 
It is present in the superficial layer of the prickle layer or in the first layer of the granular layer. And thickening of the cell membrane is because of these odland bodies containing keratinosomes. These granules are discharged into the intercellular space and they will provide a barrier to a penetrating foreign substance. So keratinosome or odland bodies are membrane containing granules. They are very rich in phospholipids and they discharge their contents and create the permeability barrier. Everything cannot enter into our body and all that permeability is because of a gland body is what you should remember. Now if you take granulosum, granulosum for granulosum kyo bolte? Granules hai, is liye. Two types of granules, keratohyalin, lamellar. Keratohyalin is basophilic. It produces filagrin protein, filagrin protein and it is made up of keratin and intermediate filaments. Now, its importance kya hai? Agar a filagrin protein ko kuch ho gaya to, then it lead to ichthyosis vulgaris, atopic dermatitis. That is what you need to remember. Then lamellar, lamellar bodies. Is may odland bodies otherwise called cementosomes will be there and they produce the lipid which provides the barrier function that is what you need to emphatically remember now what is the principal cell of the epidermis keratinocytes are the principal cell so skin is the largest organ of the body 16 to 20 percent of the total body weight Glabrous skin is non hairy, non glabrous is hairy. There is epidermis, dermis, subcutis. Epidermis is outermost layer, serve as a barrier. Dermis is deeper layer, produce structural support. Subcutaneous has fat and connective tissue. Acha bhaiya, epidermis. What is epidermis? Active stratified squamous epithelium. Mainly four types of cells are there in epidermis. Keratinocytes, melanocytes, Langerhans cells, Merkel cells. Each, ke mein, each of these cells ke mein, teen char points. Let us be very sure. Now if you look at the layers of epidermis. You have stratum, basal, spinosum, granulosum, lucidum, corneum. It's many basal and spinosum ko mila ke stratum malfigian bolte hai. Now basal ke baare mein do teen baate bolo. Basal ka columnar or cuboidal keratinocytes. Basal mein hota hai desmosomes where the cells in the basal layer that is this keratinocytes. They are all interconnected by the intercellular bridges called desmosomes. And uh, these basal keratinocytes are attached to the subepidermal basement membrane with a modified desmosome, that is hemidesmosome. The basal keratinocytes are interspersed with uh, all the melanin producing melanocytes in the stratum basale. Stratum basale is the primary site of multiplication, doctor. Pura mitotic activity basale mein hota hai. So, bhaiya, epidermis mein kya hota hai? Corneum, lucidum, granulosum, spinosum, basal is what you need to remember. Then spinosum ke baare mein teen char points bolo. Shur shad aane wale baat hai bolo. Ye baat, wo baat nahi bolna. Right? Haan, mai bata ta. Spinosum mein bhaiya, keratinocytes are polyhedral in shape. Is liye spinosum ho gaya. Barabar? Then, Tonofibrils. Typically, the cells in the spinous layer contain large and conspicuous bundle of keratin filaments called tonofibrils. And they contain these organelles called lamellar granules. And they have a very limited cell division. Because basal mein pura cell division hota hai. They have a very limited cell division. Now, uh, Yes. Uh, so 
Ranjit, Paul is asking, um, now, straighten granulosa. Let us talk about the granulosa. Um, now, doctor, um, straighten granulosa. In this, you have keratohyaline granules, woodland bodies, classical feature. Then stratum lucidum. Lucidum may kya hota hai, doctor? Translucent cells are seen in the thick epidermis of the palms and soles. And uh, where is lucidum? This was a favorite MCQ of the examiner. Between granulosum and corneum, there is a lucent area which is called lucidum. And in this layer, the cells are nucleated and they are called transitional cells. Then straight up corneum ke baare mein batao. It is the outermost layer of the epidermis. Flat enuclear, enuclear cells without nucleus. And they are arranged together like a bricks in a wall is what you need to basically uh, remember. And the fluorescent staining will show that the cells are arranged like a stack. And one of the favorite MCQ of the examiner is uh, 50 to 75 days is the total turnover time is what you need to remember. Now, right. Uh, now, doctor, what are the various cells of epidermis? Uh, okay, Ranjit Paul, we will take it. Now, doctor, melanocytes. Typically, they are derived from neural crest. One of the favorite questions. Eighth week of fetal life. And the dendrites of these melanocytes typically are stained black with a silver salt. So, this is how the melanocytes typically look like. Uh, yes. Is the video stuck? One minute, doctor. One minute, one minute. I will just uh, restart the broadcast. Yeah, I hope we are all back, Doc. Now, very good, very good, very good. Now, yes, where are we stuck up with? Now, what are the function of melanocytes? They absorb UV light and they impart the color. Then Langerhans cells are important cells in epidermis, doctor. Bone marrow hai, uska misankaimal precursors jo hai, from them, even this Langerhans cells are also derived. And typically, uh, Langerhans cells may one favorite question asked. What is that racket shaped uh, granules in the Langerhans cells called? Beer bag granules is what you need to remember. So, Kalke examiner. Electron microscopically a beer back granule aapko dega and you should be in a position to recognize and be able to answer. Now what is the role of Langerhans cells? Fundamentally they are the antigen presenting cells, allograft rejection, immunotolerance, epidermal differentiation, regulation, they are all the functions of the 
Langerhans cells and since they are APCs, antigen presenting cells, they also play a role in defending the against the microorganisms. Now, Merkel cells ke baare mein baat kar. Typically, they originate in epidermis. Merkel cells, pale staining cytoplasm, spherical granules. Then, uh, what is the main function of Merkel cells? Merkel cells are the type 1 mechanoreceptor. They have a low threshold touch receptors. And they are very sensitive to vibration at low frequencies, 5 to 15 hertz is what you need to remember. Now, doctor, intercellular junctions ke baare mein do teen baate karenge before we go to the next question. What are the various intercellular junctions that you find in the skin? Desmosomes, adherence junction, gap junction, tight junction. One, two points about each of them. Desmosomes, they bridge the adjacent keratinocytes. That is a point you need to remember about desmosomes. And uh, what are the components of desmosomes in epidermis? Desmosome cadherin, armadillo family of nuclear and junctional protein and plaquettes. Cadherins are of two types, desmoglins and desmocolins. That's how you divide. So desmoglin 1, desmoglin 3, Pemphigus vulgaris, bullus, pemphigoid, abhi abhi hum discuss kiya na? Ha. And uh, typically they are calcium rich glycoproteins, cadherins. That is what you need to remember. Then adherence junctions. What are the two words that you need to remember when it comes to adherence? Adherents are electron dense transmembrane structures that engage with the actin skeleton. They have nectin and cadherin complex. Then what is gap junction? Gap junction bolte hi aapko connexons. The word that should come to your mind is connexons gap junction. Okay, doc. Connexons. And what are the function of gap junction? They will permit the sharing of the low molecular weight metabolites and ion exchange. And gap junction is important for synchronization, differentiation, growth and metabolic coordination of the various avascular organs, including epidermis. Then tight junction. So typically you have jams. You need to remember the protein jams. So junctional addition molecules. They are important for the tight junction. And who is the main mediator of main mediator of the permeability of the epithelia doctor? It is the tight junction is what you have to emphatically remember. Now doctor, Langerhans cell is present in which layer of epidermis? Come on, punch your answers doctor. Langerhans cells are typically present in spinosum is what you should remember. So if you look at the stratum spinosum, it has got polyhedral cells which are spiny in appearance. They have Langerhans cells predominate, melanin granules are also there. Then how about Merkel cells? They are there in stratum basale and uh, they are in the epidermis of the hairless skin and they are important for proprioception, touch. Then Langerhans cells, they are the antigen presenting cells which are formed from the precursors that also form the cells in the bone marrow. Then in epidermis, what do you have? Keratinocytes, melanocytes, Merkel cells, Langerhans cells. So, Ekmar, Ek Martaba, Aap Dekhe Lijiye, Ye Hota Hai Doctor Keratinocyte. Favorite question of the examiner. Ye Hota Hai Melanocyte. Histologically, you should know how to identify. Then, this is another example of melanocyte with melanosome. Then, you have stratum corneum, granular, spiny, basal. In this, you are able to see the presence of Langerhans cells. So, this is how the corneum looks like. Then, this is the granulosum, right? Between stratum, um, uh, then you are having uh, the stratum spinosum, 
and stratum the same. So, a layers of epidermis is one thing that the examiner is very, very obsessive about. So, if you take corneum, corneum ko dusra naam hai, horny layer, dandruff is up, corneum level pe hota hai, and typically they have many rows of dead cells which become continuously shed and disquamation occur. Lucidum jo hota hai, it is typically there in the thick skin, especially palms and soles ka skin ka histology dekhe to vaha aapko lucidum dikta hai. That is what you need to remember. Now, doctor, uh, let's quickly go to the next question. Merkel cells are present in which layer of epidermis? Who is going to give you the correct answer? Merkel cells are present in which layer of epidermis? If you answer this correctly, Abhita Kaap correctly samaj liya. Radhika says Basel. Santosh says Spinosum. Prakash Reddy is saying Spinosum. Basel. Radhika Jindabad. Now, doctor, acanthosis ka matlab kya hota hai? What is acanthosis? Come on, who is going to become the dermatologist of the tomorrow's Neat PG? Acanthosis ka matlab kya hota hai? Punch your answers, doctor. Question number 40. Yes. Uh, mention the question number and punch. Priyanka thinks separation. Indrani thinks thickening. Even daffodils thinks Swapnil Kumar also is saying thickening. Thickening of prickle cell layer, not granular, prickle cell layer is called as Abhishek Verma Jindabad is called acanthosis. Doctor, this is a 49 year old man, woman, obese and thick scaly erythematous verrucous plaque confined to neck. This is called acanthosis magricans. So this is hyperkeratosis. This is papillomatosis and what you are seeing here is acanthosis, acanthosis, you are able to see no, acanthosis, acanthosis hota hai diffuse epidermal hyperplasia, what is hyperkeratosis, thickening of the stratum corneum is called hyperkeratosis. Parakeratosis, it is also keratinization, but with retained nuclei in the stratum corneum, with retained nuclei, hai to parakeratosis bote. Orthokeratosis, any hyperkeratosis without parakeratosis, matlab without retained nuclei is called as orthokeratosis this definition you should be sure doctor so acanthosis jo hota hai one of the favorite questions of the examiner baya epidermal thickening but epidermis ka which layer emphatically you should answer in the tomorrow's exam prickle 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 cell layer is the one which is thickened in the case of acanthosis not any other layer not granulosum be very sure then hyperkeratosis, thickened corneal layer, dyskeratosis, premature keratinization, parakeratosis, retained nucleus in the corneal layer, spongiosum, intraepidermal edema, acanthalosis, separation, adherence of one keratinocyte to the other is called acanthalosis, acanthalysis. Lichenoid means inflammation of the basal layer of epidermis. Basal layer of the epidermis, when it gets affected, no doctor, then it is called lichenoid. Ye jo dermatologist, chamade wale doctors ka terminology ko agar samaj nahi paaye to. This is not even dermatology, this is dermatopathology, right? Examiner pura khelta hai aap se. Aur ek baat mere saath revision karo, acanthosis, prickle cell, Hyperkeratosis, thickened corneal layer, dyskeratosis, premature, 
Parakeratosis retain nucleus, spongiosis intraepidermal edema, acanthalysis separation of keratinocytes, lichenoid, inflammation of the basal layer is what you need to remember. Abhi agaya doctor, ab to dermatol pathologist, shanta dermatol pathologist ban gaya abhi. Achha, fada fada bolo. Psoriasis mein kya hota hai? Psoriasis mein hota hai scale. Scale mein kya hota hai? Parakeratosis, hyperkeratosis, absent granular layer. That is the buzzword which you need to catch. Okay, doctor? Now, uh, now, regular acanthosis, club shaped elongated rid apex, regular acanthosis. Then, psoriasis may in stratum corneum you get a lot of neutrophilic collections. Pas kya hota hai bhaiya? Neutrophilic collections only na? So, isko bolte hai Munro's abscess. What is Munro's abscess? Neutrophilic collection. Kaha? Stratum corneum. Stratum corneum. So, three questions are asked by the examiner. Bhaiya, Munro's abscess ka hota hai? Psoriasis mein sarkar. Munro's sepsis kis layer mein hota hai? Stratum corneum mein hai sarkar. Munro's sepsis, abscess hai kya? Pas hai kya? Nahi hai sir. Histopathology mein ek microscopic finding hai sarkar. Neutrophilic collection in the stratum corneum is called Munro's sepsis. Is what you need to basically remember. Then subcorneal layer mein cornea ke niche kya hai cornea ke piche kya hai waha neutrophil collection hue to isko kya bolte hai doctor cojox pustule is what you need to remember additionally there will be dilated vessels in the papillary dermis in psoriasis so fada fada bolo psoriasis mein kya hota hai munros microapsis cojox subcorneal pustules dilated papillary vessels in dermis then scale which has parakeratosis hyperkeratosis absent granular layer and regular acanthosis with elongated rid apex ye mantra jo hai na doctor ye man mein baith jana theek hai now lichen planus ka story bolo which is the favorite question of the examiner there is a vacuolar degeneration of these basal cells. Band-like lymphocytic infiltrate, which is hugging the basement membrane. Band-like lymphocytic infiltrate hugging the basement membrane. There is a hyperkeratosis, but there is no parakeratosis. Psoriasis mein parakeratosis hota yaha nahi hota, like in plenus mein. Psoriasis mein Absent granular layer, magar lichen planus mein increased granular layer, highly keratinized epidermal cells, and also there is acanthosis. And also there is acanthosis. Acanthosis psoriasis mein hota, acanthosis lichen planus mein bhi hota, magar psoriasis ke acanthosis kya bolte? Regular acanthosis with a club shaped elongated rid apex. यहाँ के एकांतोसिस का एक अजीब स्वभाव है। वो क्या होता है? Irregular sawtooth appearance, sawtooth appearance of the basal cell layer. Sawtooth appearance because of the basal cell layer loss, you get a sawtooth appearance. That is the nature of the irregular एकांतोसिस in lichen planus. Examiner, if you have a question in dermatopathology, if you don't have one question in it, my name is Murli Bharadwaj. Right, doctor? Now, doctor. Parakeratosis. What is it? Parakeratosis. Persistence of the nucleus in the stratum corneum. Examiner, there is clarity. There is clarity in the exam. There is clarity in the exam. There is clarity in the exam. जो एग्जामिनर चाहता है वो हम पढ़ के गए तो एग्जाम में 
टॉपर बन जाते हैं सो परसिस्टेंस ऑफ द न्यूक्लियस इन दी स्ट्रेटम कॉर्नियम so parakeratosis is a mode of keratinization where there is a retention of the nuclei in the stratum corneum is what you need to ultimately remember generally mucous membrane may parakeratosis is normal but in the skin if there is a parakeratosis that will lead to an abnormal replacement of annular squames with nucleated cells so that is a challenge so keratinization pattern where there is a retention of the nuclei in the stratum corneum which is normal in mucous membrane is called as parakeratosis is what you have to emphatically remember now doctor this is hypergranulosis these are the apoptotic keratinocytes we are talking about the lichen planus एपोटोटिक कैरेटिनोसाइट इसको क्या बोलते हैं डॉक्टर सिवेट बॉडीज सिवेट बॉडीज वेर डू फाइंड सिवेट बॉडीज इन बेसल लेयर सो एपोटोटिक कैरेटिनोसाइट इन द बेसल लेयर इन लाइक एन प्लेगस को कहते हैं सिवेट बॉडीज एंड देर इज ए बैंड लाइक लिम्फोसाइटिक इन्फिल्ट्रेशन हैपनिंग इन टू द अंडर सरफेस ऑफ एपिटेमिस this is the histological hallmark of lichen planus is what you need to remember acha bhaiya one of the favorite question uh one of the favorite question of the examiner what are all the various findings in lichen planus uh stratum corneum granulosum spinosum basal papillary dermis Each of these layers में कुछ ना कुछ फर्क निकलता है लाइक एन प्लेन में दट इज द फेवरेट क्वेश्चन ईच ऑफ दिस लेयर्स में वॉट इज दैट द लाइक एन प्लेन विल लीड टू यू शुड बी श्योर हाइपर कैरेटोसिस विदाउट पैरकेरेटोसिस स्टेडियम कॉर्नियम में देन इन केस ऑफ ओवरऑल लाइक एन प्लेन पैरकेरेटोसिस इंस्टेड ऑफ हाइपर कैरेटोसिस then stratum granulosum may focal wedge shaped hypergranulosis stratum spinosum may kya hota lichen planus mein short toothed retail edges irregular acanthosis intracellular edema that's what you find spongiosis then stratum basal mein there is a liquefaction degeneration of the basal cells civet to body will be found and one more thing in lichen planus between the epidermis and the dermis there will be a cleft created because of the degeneration of the cells and that cleft the empty cleft jo banta hai usko bolte hai max joseph spaces max joseph spaces which are the classical feature of lichen planus then civet bodies lymphocytic infiltrate around the hair follicle there all the classical features now comes the question doctor iska answer agar aap rang bole to main i will cry abhi abhi hum discuss stratum lucida where is it present between which two layers i want all of you to answer this correctly then only i'll go to sleep right rehana is proposing a daffodils prakash reddy rahul kanna everyone is saying a absolutely not now abhi mai sone ke liye ja raha hu right so corneum and granulosum hum bahut khush ho gaya ab ready ho rahe and let me tell you 200 mcqs in dermatology last 15 years foreign medical graduate exams mca screening test MCQs तो खाली बहाना है MCQs के बेसिस पे आई विल ऑल्सो टेल यू एन फाइव टू टेन पॉइंट दैट इज ए वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वे टू लर्न राइट सो बाई द टाइम वी फिनिश दिस टू हंड्रेड एमसीक्यूज यूर ऑलमोस्ट लर्निंग अराउंड फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड पॉइंट आप एम्स जाओ नीट पी जी जाओ उनके बाप के पास जाओ कहीं भी जाओ यही होता है दीज आर द इश्यूज ऑफ द एग्जाम वेरी गुड डॉक्टर सो स्ट्रेटम लुसिडम is a thin clear layer of dead skin cells 
in the epidermis is what you need to remember. Merkel cells, where do we see duck? We see them in epidermis. Easy hai na? Ek bar clarity, clarity, clarity aana hai concepts mein. So Merkel cells are found in sensitive hairless areas is what you need to remember and uh, corneum, lucidum, granulosum, spinosum, basal and typically here you are having a Merkel cell Merkel cell it has got a tactile disc that is what you need to appreciate fat is present in which anatomical structure it is typically there in the subcutaneous tissue you have the fat is subcutaneous fat all of you know very well melanocytes are in which layer come on punch your answers doctor punch your answer question number 45 for sale so Munna is proposing corneum Chitra is proposing Basil Sara is also saying Basil Basil Abhi abhi padana doctor Can't do wrong So Basil So these are the basal keratinocytes Which are melanized And this is a melanocyte Ye sab chize ka reta Basil Stratum basil so in the stratum basal typically you have the melanocyte merkel cell vagera vagera so doctor do gante hum sab milke padhai kiye kya one of our student used a very 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 positive sentence the other day hum kamyab ho ke dikhayenge right so that should be the spirit doctor and uh, Thank you all for joining this maniac, Dr. Murli Bharadwaj. I'm, uh, I'm only 20% of what I used to be at your age, about 25 years back. But what I found is our entire life, that impulse, that passion, that mania, that strong vision towards the end in mind, what is the end point? January 5th exam and 6th we will open the champagne 5th night and uh, say that uh, by hum winners hai, like the World Cup cricket team of India. Right doctor? Please be tuned. Tomorrow once more we will continue our journey to finish the FMG question bank of dermatology. Good night. Have good dreams. Very aspiring dreams.